This video is about solving rational equations. A rational equation, like this one, is an equation that has rational expressions in it. In other words, an equation that has some variables in the denominator. There are several different approaches for solving a rational equation, but they all start by finding the least common denominator. In this example, the denominators are x plus 3 and x. We can think of 1 as just having a denominator of 1. Since the denominators don't have any factors in common, I can find the least common denominator just by multiplying them together. My next step is going to be clearing the denominator. By this, I mean that I multiply both sides of my equation by this least common denominator, x plus 3 times x. So I multiply it on the left side of the equation, and I multiply by the same thing on the right side of the equation. Since I'm doing the same thing to both sides of the equation, I don't change the, the value of the equation. Multiplying the least common denominator on both sides of the equation is equivalent to multiplying it by all three terms in the equation. I can see this when I multiply out. I'll rewrite the left side the same as before, pretty much, and then I'll distribute the right side to get x plus 3 times x times 1 plus x plus 3 times x times 1 over x. So I've actually multiplied the least common denominator by all three terms of my equation. Now I can have a blast canceling things. The x plus 3 cancels with the x plus 3 on the denominator. The here are nothing cancels out because there's no denominator. And here the x in the numerator cancels with the x in the denominator. So I can rewrite my expression as x squared equals x plus 3 times x times 1 plus x plus 3. Now I'm going to simplify. So I'll leave the x squared alone. On this side, I'll distribute out x squared plus 3x plus x plus 3. Hey, look, the x squareds cancel on both sides. And so I get 0 equals 4x plus 3. So 4x is negative 3, and x is negative 3 fourths. Finally, I'm going to plug in my answer to check. This is a good idea for any kind of equation, but it's especially important for a rational equation because occasionally for rational equations, you'll get what's called extraneous solutions, solutions that don't actually work in your original equation because they make the denominator 0. Now, in this example, I don't think we're going to get any extraneous equations because negative 3 fourths is not going to make any of these denominators 0. So it should work out fine when I plug in. If I plug in, I get this. I can simplify uh, the denominator here, negative 3 fourths plus 3. 3 is 12 fourths, so that becomes 9 fourths. And this is 1. I'll flip and multiply to get minus 4 thirds. So here I can simplify my complex fraction, it ends up being negative 3 ninths, and 1 minus 4 thirds is negative 1 third, so that all seems to check out. And so my final answer is x equals negative 3 fourths. This next example looks a little trickier, and it is, but the same approach will work. First, I'll find the least common denominator. So here, my denominators are c minus 5, c plus 1, and c squared minus 4c minus 5. I'm going to factor that as c minus 5 times c plus 1. Now, my least common denominator needs to have just enough factors to that each of these denominators divide into it. So I need the factor c minus 5. I need the factor c plus 1. And now I've already got all the factors I need for this denominator. So here is my least common denominator. Next step is to clear the denominators. So I do this by multiplying both sides of the equation by my least common denominator. In fact, I can just multiply each of the three terms by this least common denominator. I went ahead and wrote my third denominator in factored form to make it easier to see what cancels. Now, canceling time. That dies. This dies. And both of those factors die. 
Canceling out the denominator is the whole point of multiplying by the least common denominator. You're multiplying by something that's big enough to kill every single denominator, so you don't have to deal with denominators anymore. Now I'm going to simplify by multiplying out. So I get, let's see, c plus 1 times 4c, that's 4c squared plus 4c. Now I get minus, uh, just c minus 5. And then over here, I get 3c squared plus 3. Let's, uh, I can rewrite the minus quantity c minus 5 as minus c plus 5. And now I can subtract the 3c squared from both sides to get just a c squared over here. And the 4c minus c, that becomes a 3c. And finally, I can subtract the 3 from both sides to get c squared plus 3c plus 2 equals 0. Got myself a quadratic equation. It looks like a nice one that factors. So this factors to c plus 1 times c plus 2 equals 0. So either c plus 1 is 0 or c plus 2 is 0. So c equals negative 1 or c equals negative 2. Now let's see, we need to still check our answers. Without even going to the trouble of, of calculating anything, I can see that c equals negative one is not going to work. Because if I plug it in to this denominator here, I get a denominator zero, which doesn't make sense. So c equals minus one is an extraneous solution. It doesn't actually satisfy my original equation and so I can just cross it right out. C equals negative two, I can go, if I go ahead and that doesn't make any of my denominator zero, so if I haven't made any mistakes, it should satisfy my original equation. But, but I'll just plug it in to be sure. And after some simplifying, I get a true statement. So my final answer is C equals negative two. In this video, we solved a couple of rational equations using the method of finding the least common denominator and then clearing the denominator. We cleared the denominator by multiplying both sides of the equation by the least common denominator, or equivalently, multiplying each of the terms by that denominator. There's another equivalent method that some people prefer. It still starts out the same. We find the least common denominator, but then we write all the fractions over that least common denominator. So in this example, we'd still use the least common denominator of x plus 3 times x, but our next step would be to write each of these rational expressions over that common denominator by multiplying the top and the bottom by the appropriate things. So 1, in order to get the common denominator of x plus 3x, I need to multiply the top and the bottom by x plus 3 times x. 1 over x, I need to multiply the top and the bottom just by x plus 3, since that's what's missing from the denominator x. Now if I simplify a little bit, uh, let's see, this is x squared over that common denominator, and here I have just x plus 3 times x over that denominator, and here I have x plus 3 over that common denominator. Now I'll add together my fractions on the right side, so they have a common denominator. So this is x plus 3 times x plus x plus 3. And now I have two fractions that, have, that are equal, that have the same denominator, therefore their numerators have to be equal also. So the next step is to set the numerators equal. So I get x squared is x plus 3 times x plus x plus 3. And if you look back at the previous way we solved this equation, you'll recognize this equation. And so from here on, we just continue as before. When choosing between these two methods, I personally tend to prefer the clear the denominators method because it's a little bit less writing. You don't have to, you get rid of those denominators earlier. You don't have to write them as many times. But um, some people find this one a little bit easier to remember, a little easier to understand. Either of these methods is fine. 
One last caution, don't forget at the end to check your solutions and eliminate any extraneous solutions. These will be solutions that make the denominators of your original equations go to zero.